today's video. So, um, I thought I was going to get some time to properly do my AI series bit by bit and take you guys through the motions of it. But things are cranking up, things are speeded up. Now, um, yesterday, I believe there was an open letter that was uh, appended or had some very important figures as signatories. Um, people like Elon Musk, um, you know, current CEO of Twitter, former, I don't know if he's former, I think if he still is a co-founder, but he was a co-founder of OpenAI. And if you know OpenAI, they are responsible for Chad GPT. Currently the most popular AI uh, bot in the world. Then there's Steve Wozniak, who, uh, who was a co-founder for Apple and a bunch of other big names in the whole tech space. People from Google, people from Meta, and even uh, Sam Altman had said certain things which were used in this letter to um, try and bring to the attention of the public and specifically governments and also DI labs that they should pause all AI experimentation, all training, all experimentation on any AI that would make it more powerful than GPT-4 should be put on hold. Now, you might be wondering why this is the case, and I am going to break down based on even uh, things that I had talked about on my uh, radio show, Joy Geek Squad, that we talked about just this past Tuesday about some of the dangers of AI. I, I didn't want to get into the dangers of AI right now, but because of this letter, I will touch on it. I might do a fully dedicated video about it again, but because this is fresh news, I, fe I felt it was good to talk about. So let's just get into the letter. Now, I don't want to read the entire letter because I don't want to make this a very, very long video, but the meat and the bones of this entire letter is that these signatories and the group responsible for putting this open letter together, which is the Future of Life Institute, they believe that, and they are right, I, I support them, that um, with the current speed at which uh, AI is growing, we need to take a pause to evaluate how we are actually going to do this AI thing. Because... Right now, we are just in the summertime, it's even in the letter, the summertime of um, AI, where we're just making stuff. We are just keep training them, keep training, and there's no coherent direction. But we've already seen talks, we've already heard whispers in the shadows and in the cracks of AI possibly taking a lot of people's jobs. This is a conversation I was going to have later. But with that being true, and knowing the nature of a business in the world today and with how efficient AI models are, AI chatbots and the like on the market today are, we need to take into consideration so many factors of, of this entire AI thing. Other than that, we might end up crippling the world. The world that we know today would prob could probably be destabilized by AI. And it's not going to be the what we know from iRobots or what we know from um, Terminator and all these other movies that of evil eye and stuff like that. That's, that's not what's going to happen. It's just going to be the fact that companies, one of the facts that companies that are uh, profits based, which almost every company is, except no profits in general. So we, we, we need to understand that many of these companies are looking for the most efficient and easiest way to make money. And if AI is providing these um, services, you need to understand that um, people will lose their jobs. There will be a mass loss in jobs. And currently, the world is in dire economic strains. And these past six months of re amazing revolution, amazing revolution in the AI space, and I'm not going to discount that. But with that being the case, and with how popular AI has, has gotten, even in the public domain, where almost like it's a casual thing to mention chat gpt people may have heard of it they may not know what it is but they've heard of it and that should show you how uh, permissive this entire ai conversation is and with that we need to as the ai the letter is saying we need to address these things 
other another aspect that the letter brought to bear, which is very true, is the issue of misinformation. Now we know um, AI um, systems such as Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion are amazingly good at creating images. And some of these images recently we found out that, or we find out that Mid Journey has gotten exceptionally good at creating fingers, which was one of the telltale signs of um, an AI generated image. And increasingly, they are going to get better because training is going to continue. And that's why this letter is asking for the training talks. If you were, if you peruse the news or you are even in any, on any social media platform or any, even uh, the messaging app, some of you may have seen pictures of um, alleged pictures of Donald Trump being arrested. Uh, the Pope being drip, that drip was banging, I'm not going to lie. We saw these things and not many people, the average person, might not be able to ascertain the invalidity of this particular image. And this is because increasingly uh, our attention span has reduced and we are in a, in a bubble where people just take a glance at things and they come to conclusions. People, that mean the public doesn't do as due diligence. But because we don't do our due diligence, we are easily misinformed. I mean, how many of you have received WhatsApp messages alluding certain things that actually never really did happen. But and, and that in itself is a problem because if we have this powerful tool that can, that can spin tails. Now we you know the saying that um a picture tells a thousand words or I, I I'm sorry I didn't get it well probably write the right thing yet. But if that is the case you you can see how that is worrying because now you have pictures of certain things and now you 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 don't know what is true or not you you if you are not interested in finding out whether it's true or not you you will be in dire streets now the, the honest truth about the misinformation bit is that it's not as big a problem when it comes to um public figures people in the public eye because i mean it's very easy to find out if donald trump really was arrested because it would be in all major news publications if this really was the case but it is the little man is you and i who people don't really know that we we are the people who stand to fall very far because of these things and, 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 and on my show uh, on joy of geek squad a show that i'm a part of we talked about this where we talked about what the, the potential we have AI that can synthesize people's voices. What if someone writes an elaborate script and synthesizes your voice and pleads it in court? And I mean, you need to understand that your lawyers, when it, when it comes to a court case uh, and they are putting things into evidence, uh, both sides are supposed to peruse all the material and everything. But if one party doesn't do their due diligence properly and this fabricated, uh, very, very convincing, but fabricated, um, piece of evidence which is not really evidence because it's just synthesized AI synthesized stuff is presented it becomes a whole new thing because the jury's job is not to determine whether this was fabricated or not it is the job of the teams uh the 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 the, the plaintiff and the defendant and all these people there is their job so if the jury just hears this and they've been listening to you all day so that was a powerful example because it, it is very warped you could there could be pictures of you generated somewhere alluding to you having done something when you didn't do that and if you don't have a strong alibi and that's it that's it for you so this letter in itself is very 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 important it, 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 it is one of the first times in tech where we've had such a widespread uh notion of let's let's take a step back let's pause in this this letter um it's, it's very important. We we actually do need to take a pause. It's exciting stuff, but that is the problem. In our excitement, we may do uh, we may falter and cause a lot more problems than we actually intended to. And like I said, the the big tech companies are not the ones we should be afraid of. It's the people in the shadows, the people that we don't know who are tinkering all over the place. Because this is one thing that I I, I need you to understand as to why I support this. Um, this letter that's be it's simply because like i mentioned in my previous video we do not have a proper understanding of what intelligence is and how we as a species are intelligent we do not understand what sentience is we've not 
I mean, in our minds, I, we've not been able to write a mathematical equation to accommodate sentience, which is one of the factors of the frame problem that I was so excited to talk about, but I have to put on hold. It probably might end up being one of the last things I talk about in the series. So if we do not know, but we've created a super powerful um, machine learning um, system on AI that is able to scarf all our archives of available information in seconds to generate responses. What makes us think that that, that I, a, a constant acquisition of knowledge is not the birthing of sentience? How, how do we, 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 if we as humans cannot like properly ascertain what sentience is. We have, uh, let me say preliminary understanding of what sentience is, aware, awareness of your existence. But because we are trying to create artificial intelligence, what you need to understand is that with many of these AIs being trained publicly, in a sense that they have been put in a public space to be trained, the problem that arises is that because we do not know, we have no proper awareness of what sentience is, would we be able to flag it when this AI has attained sentence? And then the after effects of that. We might not be able to know. And it, it, is it a risk we should be taking? I, do, I don't think it's a risk we're taking. I think the current AI tools that we have are great. This letter is asking for a six month course in all things AI training and stuff like that past the level of GPT-4. So if your AI tools have not gotten to the level of GPT-4, you are, you are, you are so open to train it. But I think this is a great letter. And, um, I think I'll keep looking into this and see what happens. They are asking for a six month halt so that the powers that be or government and, uh, and the AI labs could properly come together and create legislative frameworks and systems that would govern this entire new space that has vastly superior powers. It, it goes back to me always saying that this is one of the reasons why I say the Ghanaian government needs a fully dedicated tech ministry. We need people who would be able to marry legislature and the tech space to be able to. I mean, if you look at what's going, what had happened in during the TikTok. Um, the whole, the whole TikTok versus the U.S. Senate thing. I'm sorry to say it was a bit embarrassing. I wasn't even the one asking the questions and I was embarrassed. So this is a good thing. We need to pause. This this letter is, it's important. It, it, and it shows that there, there are actually people out here who, some may say that these are people who are not benefiting. But like I said, the likes of Google, Meta, certain people from OpenAI yeah, have said certain things to support this. So I think this is one of the few times that like, humanity is genuinely starting a, a, a cautionary tale. Like we are, we are, we are, we are going to preempt actually preempt a cautionary tale, preventing anything crazy from happening. So, um, you guys should check out the letter. I'll put the link to the description and be a signatory, add your signature, um, in my description so that you guys can check the whole thing. But like I said, it's a great letter and yes, AI. With the power that it has, its capacity, as with many at all tools, they can be used for good or they can be used for devastatingly. And yeah, well, I do a video about some of the frameworks and some of the things that I think we should do. I think I'll do that next. I'll do that. That will be my next video to add to this, to talk about, because I, like I always say, I don't like talking into the vacuum and just reacting and commenting. I also like to bring possible solutions and put them out there. So, uh, the next episode in this series will be some of the lead off room like that we did, my colleagues and I on Heat Squad actually did talk about, and that I feel makes sense. And I think you guys should. So catch you guys in the next one. As always ask your questions in the comment section. Let me know what else you want me to cover when it comes to AI, when it comes to anything. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, we go crush peace.